My name is Jesper Frederik Emil. Uh, I'm 37 years old. Um, I live in Copenhagen. Born in Denmark. Um, I'm a trained graphic designer and in 2006 I started my own company called Clark. Um, actually it's, it's a name, so but that's a long list. Um, yeah, and so for the last 15 years or so, mm -hmm. I have working with um, um, digital typography um, in my company. Um, most of my works are typesetting of books and so on. And I think about four years ago, I, I saw a video uh, with uh, Herman Sapp, and um, I was so amazed by that that it, I really looking into that, if I could ever learn that. Um, so I started by myself and um, I wrote a lot of styles, um, testing out. I, I started with a lot of brush lettering, just found some inspiration on the internet and so on. Um, but then it was just uh, uh, first a couple of years ago I got trained as a calligrapher. But you're a left-hander, right? Yes, I am. And uh, I guess that's quite a difference. What's yeah. the, how is it to be a left-hander and to teach yourself calligraphy? Well, that was the main problem, problem from uh, the beginning that I was left-handed. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't seem to get it right. I couldn't get the right angle of the pen, um, and I was almost giving up. And then I contacted a, a teacher, and she said that well, it, it didn't matter. I just had to do one thing, and then I could write calligraphy just like any any other. I, I started out with uh, a lot of brush lettering. I found some uh, inspiration on the internet um, and bought all the pens that I could find. I thought you know, the better the pen, uh, the better I was going to be. But of course, that was not right. Um, and then I started um, when I learned how to write calligraphy as a left-handed. Um, how to get it right, I started out with black letters, gothic, uh, gothic styles. Um, and I wrote that for, yeah, I don't know, about a year or so, and then I moved on to italic and uncial and yeah, so on. First, uh, I started with a lot of brush pens, like, uh, I have some of them here, um, like these zebra pens from Japan. Okay. Um, and then I found the the parallel pen, of course, <laughs> that everyone is using today. Um, and I really love that. I really love the flow, and uh, yeah, I really love that. Is this like the same cool pen for left-handers as it is for right-handers? Yeah, when you know, when when I write as a left-handed, I I write downwards instead of horizontally, and then it doesn't matter which pen I have. I see. Because yeah. for me as a right-hander, I mean, Pilot is something totally different than most of the tools. Yeah. So I was wondering if it's the same for left-handers. Well, I, I wrote with the with the Pilot pen for, for a year or so, and then my former teacher told me that I have to move on to... Um, dip pens. Yeah, dip pens, and uh, with these nips and so on, to get a much more sharper line. So, so ever since that, I've been using dip pens. So what exactly made you search for a teacher, and how did you find her? Well, what it did you. What did she? What what was she teaching you? Um, she was teaching me. First of all, she was teaching me how to write calligraphy as a left-handed, um, and that was just you know turn the paper ninety degrees and write downwards, and then I could have the right angle, and then she. Um, I think for about five or six times she taught me just the basic shapes of calligraphy, or what the what the pen could do, how to get the thin line, the thick line, and the medium line, and so on. And I had to do like hundreds of sheets of paper just with patterns on it that uh, learned me how to control the pen. So I was kind of frustrated in the beginning because we didn't write anything; we just learned how to use the pen. But it was. It was a good practice. So, ex ex except of writing, like as you said, like upside down, 
Is there something like any other trick that is like mainly helped you as a left-hander? Um, or this is the trick of the left-handers? I think it, it was the trick for me. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I, th I think when it, it was a hassle in the beginning because I, you're not used to seeing the letter shapes like that. So it takes a lot of practice writing downwards, but when you are used to it, you just see the, the letters as the shapes and then you also have a better feeling of how the flow is and so on. But you know, no, I, I write downwards and I use uh, some guide sheets like this. Okay. Um, um, this one for italic where the slant is all gone and when, for example, Gothic and so on, I use something like this, it's just squared. Is there an alphabet which is like easier than the others for left hand? Like, is there a difference? Mm. And is there alphabet which is really hard for left-handers? Mm, I don't think there's. Uh, I don't think it, uh, it matters if you're left-handed or uh, in the alphabets. I think the easiest one is the black letters, the Gothic style, because it has uh, a very uh, you know, horizontal and vertical lines, at the beginning uh, at least, and when you move on to fractura and so on, it will be more curvy and so on. But yeah. But when I started, um, <laughs> my teacher said that the mother of all script was Italic. Um, and that was we, what we were aiming for. Okay. And when I got to Italic, uh, when I wrote uh, Uncial and, uh, uh, and Gothic style a long time, um, when, when we got to Italic, it was really pretty easy for me. And I, um, not easy, but it was, it really had the flow in it. I really like to write Italic. I see. So, but I, I don't know if, if it was, she was very strict about that. First you learn Gothic style and then Uncial and then Italic. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think Italic is pretty hard to start with. Yeah. Huh. No, that's funny because... What do you think? It's funny because the alphabets you said is like, the alphabets, which like when I was starting and I was on the internet asking Theo Swan, mm -hmm. I was very much like beginner. I was like, dude, which are the best alphabets I should learn? And he gave me exactly the same alphabets. The same alphabets? Yes, okay. Gothic, Italic, and Unshow. Yeah. Well, these are the ones. <laughs> I see, I see. That's pretty cool. So, are, are you mostly working with dip pens by today? Yeah. I practice with dip pens. I want to be better with them. I'm, I'm still a, I'm still a, a beginner, if you would say that. I only written calligraphy in full time for about two, three years. I wanted to achieve more with the dip pens, but I'm, I'm really fascinated, uh, fascinated by ruling pens. Um, so I write a lot with ruling pen as well, uh, and folded pens and so on, like, like these types. Um, so these are my main tools, the ruling pen, the folded pen and the dip pens. Uh, actually, I right now I only use uh, Browse, um, I've tried some else Mitchell and so on, but they're also nice, but Browse right now is my favorite. I would really like to minimize the problem uh, that it is being a left-handed. Uh, it is hard in the beginning because you have to learn either to move your hand in the right position but that's very hard because mm -hmm. then you have to write like this but when you achieve that you could write just downwards I think um, I think there's not more to it than there is no right I'm asking because I'm being asked a lot by left handers yeah. on calligraphy masters and they're like with all kinds of questions so I'm just trying to of course um, to find out some something you know because yeah but um, Overall advice would be to write downwards and it, it takes a lot of time to get used to it but when you get used to it, write downwards, you will have the same feel as a right-hander. The only thing, that, there, is a, there is a problem, that is that you don't see the word you're writing as a right-hander. Uh, you know, I write downwards so I will see it like this uh -huh. uh, and the right-hander will see it like that and 
maybe the right-handed more um, from the beginning can see how the flow of the letters and the, the layout should be where I have to visualize it before and yeah in the beginning hope for the best but, I see. but when you when you get used to it you know uh, how far between the words how far between the letters and so on it will flow just as uh, just as if you were right handed the way i learned it i, I learned it just the way right handed does it you know so it's uh, i i build up the letters the exactly same way, the same exactly the same way okay that's fine yeah, yeah. I, I know there's a lot of i think there's many ways to do it i think there's many left handers who build them some even right from the back uh, write the last letter first and then go um, backwards um, but again if you write downwards you could you, you just you the pen is in the exact same position as a right hand and then the letters is built up a couple of years ago I bought the what is called uh, Dennis Brown I think from mm -hmm. Ireland I think if I'm, yes if I'm not mistaken uh, I bought his, uh, it was not a book, but uh, DVDs, Yes. Uh, and I studied them, um, and then I bought John Stevens, okay. John Stevens' book, Scribe, yes. I can really recommend that one. So, out of those books, which will be your favorite book? Uh, right now, it's, I must say it's Scribe by John Stevens. Scribe. So, yeah, it is filled with examples, it's so good to look at. So. Yeah. Let's ask you like this, how many hours did you spend before on practicing and how many hours do you spend now on practicing? Uh, before it was, I don't know, for the last year I've, I think it was like, yeah, between two and five hours every day. Okay. Yeah, I, I write a lot. Um, and now it's like, it's down to between one and three hours a day and some days not at all. <laughs> but. It's okay. But you think there is a difference like when you practice more and when you practice less? Yes, definitely. Um, that, I think that that's the good thing about, you know, practicing, every, every, not each time, but you know, in a, in a period of time I, I can really see the progress mm -hmm. of my own work. You know, six months ago I can see the work that I did back then is... That's yeah. what I wanted to ask you. Do you keep like your sketchbooks? Do you keep stuff you practiced from a long time ago? Yeah, I do that. And yeah. that's and that's I I, uh, I I try to you know when I write so much I have piles of paper, so I try to be hard uh, and and uh, and throw away the worst and keep the best, and then I date them so I can go back uh, two years ago. <laughs> I could do this, huh? And and sometimes I I will copy my own work. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you know. To see how much you've improved. Yeah, write the same text, the same layout, <laughs> and then have those two pieces uh, together, and it's like sometimes it's it's really obvious that you become better. Yeah, that's, that's a good and one. And then that I think that that's a good practice. Yeah, because I, I do the same. Like, but I also keep my bad pieces because. I don't yeah. know. Sometimes I just look through stuff and I get inspired by stuff which I don't like. I'm like, hey, there's some good ideas here. You exactly. Know? This one is actually. All of this is actually old work. This is something of the very first ones. Um, you see, this is this is how I learned how to write italic. Um, I was not allowed to make the round curves, it should be very hard so I could get a feel for each letter. Um, you can see it's very, it's very edgy. This is some ruling pen. Those are from our first words? Yeah, I think this was uh, from, I don't know, maybe a half year in, in when I uh, was uh, taking classes. This, I love this work, it's, it's really <laughs> like nice. Here's some of uh, my practice sheets okay. when I started to learn Italic. It's like FJ, 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 and all uh, very edgy FJ. I, I was not allowed by my teacher, not allowed to make the round 
because I have to have this feel for the lettering, huh. for the letter before I make it round. I see. Um, and I have, yeah, you can see all of this as well. A lot of practice sheets. Nice. Then just to know how to. Yeah, here's some different styles. That's quite cool, man. But I can really recommend, you know, making these practice sheets. Yeah. Because it, it makes the um, transition to writing the letters so much easier. I see. When you get the feel of the letters. Well, the first one is, I don't know, it's easy. It's just three, but, you know, John Stephen is my all time hero. Okay. He's, uh, you know, for. For formal and classic calligraphy, he's really the best. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found uh, Yves Le Terme. Um, and when I found him, he, I was so inspired by his uh, ruling pen work and, and his gestural way of writing. Um, yeah, and then right now it's Christopher Haynes. I really love that guy. Okay. I really love his work. I see. Um, yeah, but oh, I could keep on. I could keep on going. Yeah, you but, can uh, drop some more names. People like will like to hear names. I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, what's your name? Yukimi Anand. Yukimi. Yeah, I think he's called Yukimi. Okay. Don't don't hit me up on that. But I'm I'm thinking. And Luca Barcelona. I love his modern approach to calligraphy. Mm -hmm. um, um, Dennis Brown as well. Um, um, yeah, and. I said I could on many, but now I can't get on any more names. I, I really, I well, I, I enjoy writing calligraphy, uh, even at my current level. But when I see some of the the masters and see their work, my goal is to to write like them. Is to you know write a Roman capital like John Stephen or Christopher Haynes. That would be my goal. Um, and yeah, and in the future as well, I would like to maybe um, make some more gestural calligraphy and maybe make some prints of them and try to sell them. And, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to be better. But basically, you're doing it for the art and because you love it. Yeah, and it, it is so close to my work as a graphic designer. And right now, I'm. Uh, beginning to use it in my work, you know, on covers and uh, in books and so on. Um, so right now I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get better and I, I can see I can use it more and more in my work. And yeah. Which is your favorite letter and which is the letter you like the least or you have the most difficult to answer? Oh, that changes a lot. Uh, in the beginning, I hated the S. In a, that, that also depends which uh, alphabet we're talking about or which uh, script. Uh, okay. But you know, if you talk uh, italic, S and uh, uh, V was my hate mm. letters. Um, right now, it is F in italic. Okay. I can't seem to. Well, I can make a proper F, but not a good F. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And which are your favorite letters then? Which My favorite there? letter? Well, I'm, I think it's uh, A and B. A and B? Maybe it's because they are the first ones and I wrote them <laughs> a million times. So I'm pretty confident in my A and B. I see. Yeah. What inks do you use or like? Um, what do you work with when you write? Like, I uh, write in uh, gouache. Gouache? Yeah. Which one? Uh, that depends. Uh, lot, not that depends. That that varies a lot. Smith and Wesson. Um, um, yes, but for practice, I, I I buy the cheapest ones. Um, they they work. Of course. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I, I can't remember the name of the ones I use right now. What would you say or recommend to all the 
people which are like discovering the art now and they're like they want to start but they don't know what to do and like for all the beginners and people which are just starting what you, would, would you tell to them and well give a advice or whatever yeah um, well um, when I started out I, I wish someone would tell me or I, or I could find it on the internet the the way the, the, the letters were built up you know stroke by stroke by stroke by mm -hmm. stroke um, and then simply begin take one uh, alphabet at a time uh, learn how to write an A repeat that A on 50 sheets go on to B and then try to you know practice 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 Practice. Practice. That's the ultimate. Yeah, that's the ultimate. Um, yeah. But some people say they're like, you could be practicing like crazy and you could be practicing the wrong way. What do you think of this? Because I'm not sure I believe where there is a right and a wrong way. Like, even though there are rules. People, people, no, I think, well, people can do what they want, but I think there's a good practice and a bad practice. Yes. Um, I think the good practice is when you know when you know where you want to go. Um, um, you want to achieve to write this form of italic example. Um, then you have to start not by writing that final italic. You have to get an understanding of each letter and how they are built up. So if you just try to copy that example, you I think it would be very hard for you, mm -hmm. um, but I'm yeah. But I'm not saying that uh, that anyone who does it that way is wrong. I just say it would it is it, it was very much easier for me um, to learn it that way. You know, each letter at a time, get a feeling, uh, get an understanding of how was each letter built up and so on. Um, but yeah, everyone different style. Well, I think I'm fine with my questions, mate. If you want to say something which I didn't ask you or say something to someone, just... Um, well, I want to say thank you for you. Thank you for, uh, yeah, doing so much amazing work for calligraphy. It's really good. Thank I you, think, uh, yeah. More should write calligraphy.